Hey there. It's been a minute since I posted a video and I have something I wanted to share instead of putting it up on social media or whatever. I figured I'd make this video and uh, and I hope I hope it's a blessing to you. Uh, the thought that came across my my, my way uh, last week, everyone worships. And there's a quote from an American author named David Foster Wallace. And he says, the only choice we get is what to worship. And the compelling reason for maybe choosing some sort of God or spiritual type thing to worship is that pretty much anything else that you worship is going to eat you alive. If you, have, if you worship money or things, then you will never have enough. If you worship your body or beauty or sexual allure, you will always feel ugly. If you worship power, you will end up feeling weak and afraid. Worship your intellect, you will end up feeling stupid, a fraud, and always on the verge of being found out. Mr. Wallace continues on, he says... But the insidious thing about these forms of worship is not that they're evil or sinful, and, and, and they may be, but it's that they're unconscious. They are our default settings. So, where does that put us, especially as Christians? Worshiping God in spirit and in truth as the Bible says we ought to. Jesus himself told the woman at the well that that is the way to worship God. It's different, mainly because God requires nothing of us except that we come to him in our broken and imperfect condition. That's it. He will fill us with all good things. He's not going to consume us. Like these other things that we may worship, they, these things will consume us, but God will not consume us. He will only fill us, and he'll fill us with all the good things. And not only that, he will fill us with an unconditional love. And many, many of you who are parents... You understand this concept, whether you realize it or not. You, If you have children, and your children are going to be disobedient, and they're going to do things that they know they're not supposed to do, and you're going to have to punish them from time to time. And that doesn't change your love for that child. You know, it, you may be disappointed, but it doesn't mean you love them any less. And God is exactly the same way with us. He only wants to give. So much so that he gave Jesus to die and pay the price for our sins. He's already given. He's not trying to take anything else from us. He's trying to fill us and give us. That's a great deal. How many times can you go to the store and have absolutely nothing and yet walk out with everything? Yeah, it doesn't happen. Not in real life anyway. But it does with the Lord. When He comes in, when you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, He will fill you to overflowing. There won't be enough room to contain all the goodness that God has in store for you. That's pretty awesome, I thought. What do you think? That's all I have for you today. God bless you. God loves you. I love you. And we'll see you next time.